Hey guys, welcome back. What I'm doing here is I'm putting together some baseline footage for temperatures and performance. Want to see how well my current system performs the way it's configured, and I want to see how hot I can get my CPU just flying around DCS and what kind of performance I'm getting in the process. Because I will be upgrading to an i9-9900K uh, very soon. I actually picked up the processor yesterday and I'm just waiting to find the time to do the upgrade. This is running at 1080 and uh, I have all the bells and whistles turned on here and uh, my GPU isn't breaking a sweat. I'm not even getting, you know, I'm not even hitting 80, and I usually do on this thing when I really push it, so it's interesting. I'm just kind of zipping around here in the Mirage right now, and the CPU really isn't even hitting 50 degrees Celsius, which is really good. I've never really had a problem with heat. I, I have an existing, I think it's an H500 Cooler Master case, and the CPU cooler, I think, is a Cooler Master EVO 212 or something. And as you can see, it's not really breaking a sweat here. I'm not getting above 75 Celsius. And when I push DCS really hard, I've seen 80, 81, 82 at its hottest. And then they just, the fans kick in and it starts to cool down. 4X MSAA, which is way overkill. Uh, SSAA at 1.5, SSLR on, uh, shadows are medium, visibility range extreme, water's high, terrain texture's high, and textures are high, and then, uh, yeah, preload radius is maximum, everything's pretty much cranked up. And, uh, I'm not really even breaking, what, 51 there for a minute on the CPU. 54 for a second there. And I'm using MSI Afterburner because it seems to be the most consistent way of uh, keeping track of the heat of your processor and your GPU both. Yeah, so 54 is the maximum I've hit on the CPU here. I am running now with my i9-9900K utilizing the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 and um, already uh, CPU temps are really low although I am just starting out too as you see now I'm running at uh, 4700 megahertz instead of the 43 whatever which ends up about 44 of the old i5 uh, 9600K that I had previously. Now, this is the same mission, and it's very hard to come up with and do the same exact thing that you did before. Usually, I would just make a track file, but what we're trying to do is get temperatures up and see what the performance is over a period of time. And in the last video that was before this, detailing the performance and temperatures of the i5 9600K with the uh, Cooler Master EVO 212, I believe it is, that I had before, uh, we played that for about 10 minutes. And uh, I think the results left us somewhere around 49 FPS and then a maximum of about 55 Celsius, I believe, on the CPU. And everything is exactly the same as it was before. So if we go in here and we look at all these settings, I, I copied everything that I had before. So VSync is off, 1.5 SSAA, 4X MSAA, which is completely overkill. But people say you must turn that on to have the best effects, blah, blah, blah. Shadows on medium, visibility range extreme, 
water's high, civilian traffic low, high, high for the textures. Uh, SSAA is uh, 1.5, SSLR is turned on, um, and again, everything is exactly the same as it was before. So this isn't a, uh, a scientific test. This is just, you know, trying to do the same thing with the same settings with a new CPU and a new cooler. So I'm going to come back here in about 10 minutes and we'll see what the numbers look like then. But it's been about 10 minutes now and um, today's actually a warmer day outside so the heat isn't as high so that may be a variable too um, in my apartment but it's, it's not that much cooler in here than what it was when I did that other performance test weeks ago. Um, so overall I don't think my processor has hit above like 46 Celsius. Um, my average FPS is sitting around 52 right now, and I believe before I hit, what, 49 or 50-ish? So, as expected, performance-wise, I'm really not doing that much better overall. Everything seems about the same. However, my GPU, since my CPU doesn't get that warm, it doesn't bring any more unneeded heat into the case because the GPU and CPU do sit rather close together and my GPU hasn't even hit above 76 which is really good because usually when I'm playing for 10, 15, 20 minutes and giving this thing a workout with all the bells and whistles turned on um, things will get a little warm. I've, I've went as high as 80, 81, 82 Celsius and then the fans kick in and bring things back down. So performance-wise, I'm going to say that it's, it's a win. Um, it's not worse than what it was. It's not considerably better than what it was. But it's right about what I expected. But the temperatures in general are much, much better, I think, before I hit, what, 50. And uh, I'm sitting here hovering between 38 and 40-ish the entire time. Uh, the GPU, again, is like 72, 73. Not really that high. All right, guys. So I've made a couple minor changes. And I think this is going to impact performance greatly. So basically, I've went in. And if we go to options, we go to system. The only thing I changed was I turned visibility range down from extreme and I skipped ultra and I went right to high and I turned MSAA down to 2x instead of 4x so that's the only changes I've made and I want you to see the difference in performance because already I've picked up a good number of FPS here Like I said, I already see an increase in performance because I'm at an average of 60 FPS right now. So I've basically gained 10 FPS back just by turning down the visibility range and going from 4x to 2x MSAA. Considerable improvement. Alrighty, MSAA is completely turned off. That is the only other change I've made at this point. So if we go and look at the options, high, high, low, high, visibility range, high instead of extreme, heat blur off, shadows medium, MSAA off. But I did leave SSAA and SSLR turned on. And my performance jumped up greatly. We're talking what? The average at the second is about 90 some FPS. My average has jumped up to 72 my fluidity is fantastic. You don't have to have everything turned on in DCS to have it looking good. But if you're smart and you fine-tune things, you can have a much better experience performance-wise. And I'm a firm believer in FPS over anything else. Because frames are life, if you ask me. It, it makes for a much more believable and smoother uh, gameplay experience, and uh, the immersion factor goes up if things seem fluid. And 
we're about 78 FPS right now. So what's that? 25, 26, it's about 28, per 28 FPS better than what we started at. Not bad. All right, guys. This is the next step and probably the last leg of this video that I'm going to make because just an example of what things do performance-wise to your system. So everything stands the same as it did in the last bit of footage, except I turned off the new SSLR, which is this guy right here. So I was sitting at SSAA 1.5. I had SSLR on. Uh, all these other settings are the same as it was in the last bit of footage, but SSLR is turned off. I am already at 83 FPS on average. I'm sitting at about 128 this very second. So, and as you see, I think the water still looks fantastic. So I'm not entirely sure what the SSLR really does for you, but again, to my eye, I still see all them cool little, you know, wakes in the water, the little white waves that are going on and stuff. Things look great. So now I'm what? 36 FPS over where I began. By turning off a few features that are basically in there that seem to drain more than what they give. Where am I now? 88 FPS? It's freaking amazing. And again, some of this stuff, I just don't, like, at a glance, I'm not noticing anything being any worse with these things turned off. So it's really a matter of opinion, I think, of what you want to have turned on in your sim that helps you feel that you're doing the best. And a lot of people just like, I want to turn everything on. I want to feel the performance of my machine. And like... <laughs> I don't think anybody's machine is going to run this simulation with everything turned on at reasonable performance. It's just overkill. There's so much stuff that you just don't need turned on in DCS to have great performance and excellent visuals. So now I'm sitting at an average of 90 FPS. And this very second it's 123, 124. You see that? Now, do you think this looks any worse than what it did before? I don't think so. So, having said that, the Dark Rock Pro 4 is a fantastic cooler. The i9-9900K does usually run hotter than an i5, but as you've seen, I really haven't jumped above 50 Celsius here. If I did, it was for a second. Uh, and it's very quiet, which is awesome. Um, my performance over my i5. A lot of people are probably like, that was stupid, Rod. Why would you do that? It looks like your i5 performed just as good as the i9. I knew that going into this. Again, my, my reasoning was it was income tax time. I wanted to make an upgrade to the machine. I'm making more videos. Uh, I'm rendering more. And uh, in the process, my i9 did well in everything gaming, everything simulations, no problems in anything. Um, but at rendering the videos out, it took a little bit longer. So I've noticed with this i9, I'm doing way better. I'm being more productive. It's rendering the videos a bit faster for me. And uh, I just feel like maybe I have a little bit better performance. And I, I, I am getting five maybe 5 FPS over what I was getting with the i9 and some other titles too at times. That i5 9600K with a 2080 Super is probably the best bang for the buck performance uh, you can get in DCS and IL-2 and in games and, and simulations in general. It really is. Uh, the i9 was just, I had a few bucks and I wanted to do a productivity upgrade that also performed great in games. So that's that guys. I'm going to leave it at that. Um, again, I think the uh, Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4 is fantastic. Uh, it's definitely keeping everything very cool. Uh, my GPU has even been a little bit cooler. Uh, am I getting better performance than my i5? Not by much. But again, I am getting a little bit better, and I expected that. I didn't expect it to be a monumental performance gain, and I'm cool with that. But 
still, the i5 is definitely the best bang for the buck uh, that you can get for simulations and games, uh, especially at like 200 bucks now. So give that a shot, guys, and it overclocks very well to 5 gigahertz. Um, but in DCS, not a huge improvement, which is fine. As always, thank you so much for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. Feel free to hit that like button. And until next time, guys.